We really thought it was a bluff. Everybody did. Whistles blowing, <laughs> shoes squeaking, the roar of the crowd. It all went silent inside Rockford Public Schools as extracurriculars and sports were canceled. And for many state line area athletes, that meant that their high school careers went lights out. You know, we always wonder, you know, what, what could have been? Dwayne Collins, a three sport athlete at East, was a bit blindsided by the city's no vote. Before having his senior season taken away, he and many others expected a successful year from the ERABs. The sports success was pretty much expected. In order for us to have a good year and not be disappointed that we could probably place in six different sports in the state and we were expecting to do that. So it was quite a heartbreaker. Collins says his grades dropped off and his attitude changed for the worse. You know, he just had pent up anger and thinking, you know, how could this happen? How could this be taken away from me? Because, you know, only get one chance to be a senior in high school. And we, we had that chance, but it wasn't, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same at all. And while students like Collins missed out, others had options. Pretty high price to pay. I'm one of the few people who can look back and say, well, my senior year wasn't too bad, but most of my friends really got the wrong to the deal. Paul Harder, a swimmer at Auburn, stayed in the pool with the team at the Belvedere YMCA, a group made up of athletes from around the area. They went on to compete at nationals and even broke a Y record in the medley relay. That was a dream come true, far beyond what I ever expected. Don Hecox was a Nick Nine champion wrestler for Guilford, and when he saw the opportunity to get into the Harlem School District, he jumped on it. I always considered myself uh part of the Harlem district even when I moved away from it because I went to grade school there and middle school. At Guilford I almost kind of felt like a traitor uh, to, to Harlem. Uh, when I found out, wow, I could actually go back to Harlem my senior year. Hecox went on to repeat as conference champ with the Huskies and like Harder, felt a little bit guilty. It robbed a lot of people I know that their opportunities in life, at least in the short term, were going to be measured and affected by the opportunities they, they had in sport. And while the three men's lives forever changed, all found some form of success after athletics. Collins is retired after working for the city of Rockford. Harder continues to volunteer coach with the Knights. And Hecox gets to watch his kids now play for Harlem. <laughs> Collins still ponders what could have been for East football. And despite the ERABs eventually winning a state championship just eight years later, Collins does not believe the Rockford sports scene has ever fully recovered. No. Never has, you know. I don't, I don't think it ever will recover. And once momentum keeps going, whether it's good momentum or bad momentum, it's the most difficult thing to stop. And Harder believes the referendum vote says even more about the community. I think it says a lot about Rockford and not a lot of good things. I was really disappointed that our city thought so little of uh, its public schools and its kids that they didn't want to help us. In Rockford, Mike Buda. 23 News. No, I never quit, that's for sure. She may no longer be on the ice or even on the sidelines as a coach, but Jen Karen still has the same fight in her as she always has, and no amount of brain cancer is going to take that away. I feel 100% confident with the amount of time that I have spent. So I've had all of my surgeries, less than a week and I was back on the ice. Everything was always back on the ice, back on the ice. So I feel blessed. <laughs> Karen recently walked away from the Revolution synchronized skating program that she had built into a national championship powerhouse. One of those gold medalists is Boylan grad Ali Lung, who will continue skating at Trine University in Indiana. I started off and learned to skate as a bratty kid and Jen took me under her wing and just formed me into everything I am. East senior Molly Budlong is another Revolution skater who just found out Jen was coaching and battling a glioblastoma at the same time. I was really devastated. It's hard to see someone that you love and care about go through this, but it's also hard not to smile thinking about all the amazing things that we've done with her. She means the world to me and she's shaped the person that I am today inside and out of skating. Even my mom tells me all the time, oh, you remind me of Jen so much. Makes me happy. It was a difficult decision for the 42-year-old to leave her teams, but Jen wants to spend whatever time she has left 
which doctors say is not long, with her husband and two sons. There's a lot of challenges, but she's here and, and we're thankful. I feel like I've done almost everything or everything that I've done with coaching. It makes me sad, but um, when my choices now are not able to skate anymore or spend with time with my, my family, then yeah, I'll spend with time with family, definitely. He's somebody that soccer players in Rockford should aspire to be. Tim Dobrovolsky has come a long way since his days at Boylan. Now playing for USL side Louisville City FC, the keeper attributes his success to the atmosphere head coach Chris Mara built. I think I've been blessed with all the teams I've played for in my years of soccer that each team has a, a strong culture and they really try to push that on their players and the players have to really own up on it and take it into heart and uh, try to emulate it on the field. It's really helped me become a better player and kind of be a better human as well. Part of that culture was the school's only soccer state championship back in 2010 with Dobrovolsky as the number one in net. A year prior, the Rockford native did not know which position he really wanted to play, so Mara nudged him into the right direction. He really uh, mastered the position, and uh, you could tell just the way he was in college, and you know, uh, now with Louisville, um, his games is getting better and better every day. So I think he made the right choice. <laughs> Along with friends and family, the Titans head coach was in the stands to watch his former goalie take on the Chicago Fire in a U.S. Open Cup quarterfinal. His father, Jeremy, says seeing his son continue to exceed expectations has been one thrilling ride. At every level, we thought it would stop. You, in the back of your mind, you're always thinking that'd be great, that'd be awesome. Um, and it's, it's happened, so that's fantastic. And while Dobrovolsky is currently Louisville's backup, he sees a lot of room for growth. Hopefully I can continue to bring a positive energy, try to lead people that need leading, uh, be an outlet for people that need to express their feelings and uh, just overall uh, general happiness and support for the guys on the team. Uh, everyone has a role and you just got to find it and do the best you can. Reporting in Bridgeview, I'm Mike Buda for the 23 Sports Ticket. Play hard, play smart, play fair, guys. Show respect and have fun, all right? Good luck. Dave Gilliland has been refing boys basketball games on and off since the 1970s. The former Belvedere head coach and Stockton superintendent always tries to keep a cheery attitude, but he says fans occasionally spoil the fun. The kids are playing sports to learn lifelong lessons, some of which can be learned in the classroom, some of which can't. But sometimes it's the adults that take all the fun or take all the, the, the pleasure out of it. And because of that behavior, officials may be calling it quits. According to a recent survey by the National Association of Sports Officials, Gilliland, along with 75% of his peers, say adult behavior is the main reason for hanging up the whistle. And the numbers do not lie. Since 2011, there has been more than a 14% drop in available referees in Illinois. And in the five largest sports in terms of officiating, baseball has lost more than 1,000 umpires more than a 24% decline. We're adults, whether it's the officials, the coaches, uh, the athletic directors and the parents, and we need to behave like adults and set the tone and set the example. Rockford Public Schools Athletic Director Matt Parker says the abuse needs to stop. But there also has to be a collective effort to solve the other main issue, that not enough young people are donning the black and white stripes. After only two years, 80% of all young referees walk away. Parents have always been challenging officials uh, in any events and youth sports and so forth like that. I just think the whole thing is getting officials who want to take the time to, to learn the rules and, and stay up to date on everything. Auburn track and field head coach Kevin Anderson may disagree about referee mistreatment, but he does believe more needs to be done about a dying breed of officiating. RPS 205 says it is working on building confidence in its younger crop of refs and working on a way to recruit more. However, Gilliland, who is 61 years old, is a part of a group which on average is in its mid-50s, and he believes the time to get that done is running out. And I foresee, you know, within the next five years, it could get worse because, you know, many of us, you know, are going to be retiring. I guess as a parent or as a fan, you just got to 
try to keep reminding yourself what this is for. It's for, it's for the kids and it's part of education and it's part of what we do in schools. <laughs>